everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. Today I'm in great need of color because right now outside my window we're in 9 to 15 foot snowdrifts. No kidding, this is just like a banner year. There's no place to put it anymore, so I'm not sure what they're going to do with the next round when we get hit with it later on this afternoon. So uh, I'm going to paint something colorful. How about that? How about a peacock? I think that would be great. Um, a peacock is a wonderful thing with a lot of color and in some uh, cultures, uh, the Christian culture, it represents eternal life and it also means pridefulness too. Yeah, duh. Okay, and um, anyway, it also means prosperity or an, it's an omen for wonderful future prosperity. I like that too. Okay, well let's get some, uh, get some color on. I've done a little pre-drawing and now I want to show you how I did it because uh, it's really, really easy. And you can practice this. This is just one of my little designs. I've got a little bit of red because I've got a green drawing on there. I've got a little bit of red acrylic paint. Now we're going to be doing this in mixed media, which means I'm going to be using more than one thing. Like uh, I'm going to be using acrylic underneath and we're going to do some texture. And then I'm going to do an oil glaze over the top and who knows what else I might do. Okay, you'll just have to watch. We may do this in two to three segments, so I'll string them all together once I get it figured out. Here we go. Anyway, this is a, oh my gosh, this is a, a 10 inch by 30 inch canvas. Really neat size, not easy to film, but uh, if I had a bigger one, I would even use it. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, actually stand up for this one, and I hope you can see the top of the canvas. Uh, let's see. Here is the top of the canvas here. Yeah. And I've got his little head right here. And this is how I did this. I've got, um, you can do this in a, a charcoal or pencil. Just spray it with a little bit of hairspray. You know, just some of that aerosol hairspray before you go to paint so that it doesn't mix in with your paint. Okay, so what I started out with is a, uh, a head. The head is about, um, let's see, it's about the size of a small chicken egg right there. And I've got it just in an oval and it's, it's on this side of the, you know, the midline of the canvas, and it, it's pointing downwards, okay, kind of off to this side like this. So don't just put it sideways or up and down. It's, it's at an angle. So you see how it kind of has this, this angle to it right there, okay? I hope you can see that. And the eye is going to be right about dead center uh, of that right there, okay? That's a, that's a good way to look at it. And then I've got this little curvy beak like this, that's going to come out like that. This is just a line to show me where I'm going. And how I started this next part is I'm going to put a, kind of a little tiny letter C right under his little chin, if he had a chin. Um, and then we're going to turn this into, this is the top part of the letter S, only it's going to span way out like this, close to the edge of the canvas, not too close. I, I got it about an inch away from the canvas. You can make it an inch and a half, if you like. Um, you don't want him to be too skinny, but you don't want him to look like, you know, he's the first male bird to give birth. <laughs> no. Okay. And so I'm going to make this big, kind of long thing that kind of comes around like that, right? Now, on the top of the head, uh, I've got, I'm going to start the back line, the back line of the bird from the top of the head, not from underneath, so it looks like a giraffe. We're going to have the neck begin actually at the top of the head and I'm going to make a little bit flatter uh, letter S coming off. See how it just kind of, he just has a slight curve in his back right here. Little slight curve, paint's a little bit dry. And when your paint gets dry, uh, on, on acrylic you can make your paintbrush wet, but it's always better to use a, um, a, a little bit of a glazing medium. I use a, uh, what is it, I think it's a Liquitex glazing and gloss varnish usually um, to dip my brushes in, which of course I left down here on the floor somewhere. So anyway, we're going to keep going. We've got this uh, shallow letter S that comes out, and then we're going to pull this out like this all the way off the canvas, kind of off the canvas. So it's a little flattened letter S going all the way off the canvas like that. Okay, now the next part, so I've got this flattened letter S, 
I'm going to make on, uh, just resting on the bottom of the belly, I'm going to put an ostrich egg. Okay, about like that. A little ostrich egg. And that's the wing. It's just a wing that's kind of tucked underneath. And then I'm going to give them a little t-shirt, a little tank top. Here's a piece right here. And this is where that lime green uh, section of feathers will start. And then I'll put a little bottom to it right there. Eventually I'm going to add some little, small little feathers right here. And then I'll take the line, the red line here, I'm going to move that line and we're going to, this will be one long sweep. So we've got the, the S the, from the back going all the way around and then I'm going to swoop that right off the canvas. Okay, now this is one of those canvases that's deep on the side. So I will take that around the side and I'm going to paint that on the side of the canvas too. And this will go off and, and we'll have it on the side of the canvas. So I'll show you so that it turns, uh, it'll, it'll kind of continue off to the side. So that's the beginning of it. And then uh, on this, we're going to be doing some layering. And so the, the background color will be the first layer and we'll add some uh, various different things like metallic paint over the top and do some carving. It's going to be really, really, really cool. Okay, so let's think about what we want it to look like. Now, if I want it to have kind of an Asian type of feel to it, uh, I'll make the background in red and then I'll put gold over the top. I think you might like that, so let's do that first and then we'll do this wonderful tail. Hold on. Now you can use a, a foam brush with this uh, to make it a little easier. Uh, I'm just using kind of a cheapo flat brush like this. Now I'm going to come up underneath and I'm going to fill in the background and make sure that this is a high quality paint, you guys. I put, um, you know, some of my, I, I tried this with my kids in uh, my Wee Da Vinci Academy and we used a, um, a paint that was more student grade and I'll tell you uh, what happened when we put the second layer on or if there was any mistakes uh, the paint would just rub right off and pick up so what I don't want is anything less than the best I can afford especially if I plan on selling it so if any of you guys ever buy one of my paintings I'm never ever ever on a student grade canvas there's just no way uh, if I do, you know, if I do some really inexpensive, oh, you know, brush and brew uh, kind of uh, events, sometimes they'll be less expensive canvas so that people can practice without worrying about it. That's okay. They don't want to, you know, waste um, waste their practice time on a, a, a really expensive canvas, and I understand that. And so we, we do our practice uh, stuff on less expensive canvas, you know, kind of economy canvases. But when you're going to sell one, oh my gosh, do not scrimp on your canvas. Get a good one. You'll no also notice that it paints differently. And uh, so we just want to make sure that, that the paint, if it's really good quality paint on really good quality canvas, it is a completely different experience. It's like when we are in uh, elementary school and they give you those brushes that nobody can paint with. They're just, you know, bristles are all over the place. You know, you just don't want to have that. Now, one of the things that will help you understand the quality of the paint, uh, usually the, the paint that comes in the, uh, you know, little bottles like this, little craft paints, that's the less expensive one. You can get these for like $2.50 for a bottle. Well, that's okay for doing crafts. That's okay. Don't worry about that. But um, generally, if it's a really good quality paint, it's going to come in a tube, okay, most of the time. Now, I do have uh, paints that are, are made for pouring and that sort of thing that are more expensive that uh, are, are really good paint. But uh, for just messing around and doing a good job with good quality paint, it's going to come in a tube. This one just happens to be a gram paint. It's not bad. I like it. Anyway, here we go. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to fill in right here around the body. Looking a little bit like a goose here, isn't it? That's all right. I know this looks a little Christmassy, but it's the underpaint. And this paint is going to go on... Uh, substantially with um, a nice uh, 
thick, thick layer. Now the second layer is going to be even thicker, so don't get it too thick. And so I'm, I'm going to fill this in all the way up. I feel like his neck's a little too skinny. Uh, might have to widen that up. That's okay. It's only paint. I'll make that correction in a little bit. And we're going to go around the head like this. I'm going to fill this in like that. Up the corner. And I'm also going to do the sides. Don't forget the sides of your painting because it's it doesn't just stop here. It's kind of like when you put your makeup on and you forget about your neck. You know, don't, don't ever do that. You just look like you're wearing a mask. This paint goes all the way around. All the way around. So we'll do that. And, oh, and then also, now I'm going to do that off camera, who cares. Uh, now I'm going to come down here and not forget the corner down at the bottom. Can you guys see that? I'm going to lift that up a little bit. So the corner down here needs to be painted too, right there. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to finish filling in the red part, you know, in the background. You don't need to watch me doing that. Uh, and then I'm going to allow this to dry. I have to go off to the dentist right now and get a crown preparation done. Oh, that's going to be special. So I'm going to have a little bit of whatever they are putting in there, Novocaine, whatever it is. Uh, and it, my face is going to get too fat to film. So we'll let it dry overnight. That's a good idea. And then I'll come back and we will start on the underpainting for the tail. And also we'll be doing the over, uh, the, the color that goes over the red, which is going to be a metallic gold. Ooh, that's going to be so yummy. So, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, and then you'll be notified the next time we meet and have our next lesson on how to finish our peacock. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching and for sending me little notes. I love reading your mail every night, and uh, I just so much appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you when I return. All right, bye for now.